So welcome back to the Living Branch with the entire Living Branch family. We're so thankful for you tuning in on this morning, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. We're just excited for you to be here. I am Pastor Stafford Moore, a.k.a. Pastor Staff D. And this is our Friends and Family Day. As you can see, I got on my snapback and I got on my... Anyway, let me stop. I got in my rapper mode for a second. But we're just thankful for you being here. And we got a good message set up for you on this morning. It's coming out of Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 through 24, where God says through Jeremiah to his people, Do not boast in wisdom. Do not boast in your might. Do not boast in your riches. But if you're going to boast, boast in this, that you have the understanding and knowledge of me. I asked you a question. Do you know who you're boasting in? The title of this message is, In This We Boast. See, we have something to boast in. We can't put our confidence in all these other things. But one thing we can put confidence in and boast in, and that's our cons Lord, because he's consistent in our life. So turn over to Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23, and at the conclusion of this message, I will come back. And to then, be blessed. See you. Hold your word up. This is the word. Let it revelate. Let it open the minds of those who read upon its pages. Lord, we just thank you for another opportunity to be here before your people. God, I ask you at this time to remove all flesh out of your sight. God, use me to speak a word that impacts the hearts and the mind of everyone under the sound of my voice. God, you started it off in Sunday school. You began to 
serenade the hearts and the mind around what you're trying to say on this morning. God, we have many things that we come in the doors with, many stresses, many uh, issues of life. But God, for this next few moments, let all that fall to the wayside, that our hearts and minds be, may be attentive to what you're going to say on this morning, God, that we may become the people that you are building up. You said you are the potter, we are the clay. We are the craftsmanship, the workmanship of your hand. So God, build and mold us into who you are calling us to be. Not just as an individual, but God, even as a church body. And we ask this through the power of your son, Jesus Christ. All say, amen. Amen. So, I'm going to go ahead and switch mics right now. Because I know, I know how this goes. <laughs> Amen. There he is. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 30. Are y'all there? And if you're not, y'all put y'all hands together for Micah, who, who ensures. She texts me. I wasn't for sure if they was going to make it this morning. She said, we're going to be here. We're going to be there. So go on and send me the scriptures. And you should have saw me at the bed. I was like, I got happy. I ain't got to, Sister Becky, I ain't got to sit here and swipe and Got my friend in the house. Y'all put your hands together for Mike. Amen. So it says, thus says the Lord. Who said it? You hear me over there, man? Who said it, man? Yeah, I'm looking at you. Let's see. You better get used to me. I, I, I look at you now. Okay, I'm messing. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Underline that word boast. Because that's going to be the theme this morning. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love. Look at this, justice and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, what are you boasting in? I want you, I want to hear you. And look over there and, and look down at road, look at Sister Wren and say, what you boasting in, Sister Wren? All right. Michael, look at your daddy. Look at Mr. Fred and say, Fred. Now I want to hear you, Michael. Say, Fred. What are you? You don't you supposed to say daddy. You don't supposed to say Fred. I got you. Got you in trouble. On camera, Deacon Stokes. Got him. <laughs> I'm messing. Look at them and say, what are you boasting in? Amen. I want to talk about that this morning because, Sister Becky, sometimes we put our confidence in things that fade. Things that will not stand the test of time. Amen. People, places, things will fail us. Look at your name and say it will fail you. Amen. The Lord says, do not boast in wisdom to those who believe they're wise, Sister Shelley. Don't boast in your own wisdom, Sister Shelley. Let me stop messing with my mom. She gave me that eye. <laughs> Deacon Stokes has said, do not boast in the might for those who believe they are strong. I think I'm pretty strong, but he said, don't boast in your strength. Then he said, for those that are well off financially, he said, don't boast in your riches. What's your name, man? Sister Terry. Uh -huh. Sister Terry said, don't boast in your riches. Uh, that's right. Don't boast in that bank account. He said, but if you're going to boast, boast in this, that you have the understanding and knowledge and knowing of me. Look at them. Say, the only thing we can boast in, say it, the only thing we can boast in is knowing him. Think of Terry because life comes at us in many ways. And those seasons bring many tries, trials and trials and, and testing times that you don't know what the season's going to blow in. You don't know what state you're going to be when the wind goes away. 
You could come into a season with good health. I was listening to a person on YouTube. They said they woke up feeling good, and the next thing they knew, they was having a heart attack. Finding out that their body was breaking down on them and this heart attack did damage to their heart. Now they're enduring a new chapter of life in the way that they was not expecting. So even the body will fail you. Look at your name and say, your body will fail you. But guess who will not fail you? Amen. Look at and say, the Lord. So, Jesus, I mean, not Jesus, but the Lord said this through his prophet Jeremiah. And I want to kind of give you the backdrop of who he's talking to. This is at a time and a state of Israel where Israel had lost their focus. Israel was not keeping God center stage. They had, they had drifted away, I mean, extremely drifted away from the law. They was not practicing the law. They were not practicing the commandments. They, they was uh, uh, getting caught up in Baal worship. They, they got so egregious in their sin that they was even sacrificing their children to Baal. They, get, they got caught up in other gods and, and their money and their wealth and their wisdom and their prowess and, and their stature that they began to make God a side thing. And as long as they had the temple, Deacon Terry, they thought they was good. So, Sister Ann, what they would do is they would do they they would live their life. They would do what they want to do. And then they would go to the temple and lift up hands, talking about the goodness of the Lord and thinking about that security that he brings, Anthony, because they had the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. And the Lord began to deal with him. He went over in chapter 7. If you read over chapter 7 of Jeremiah, he talks about how hypocritical they were. He says, you don't act justice. You do the poor wrong. You, you do the foreigner wrong. You mistreat your own people. But you come into my house and you lift up your hands thinking because of the temple you have safety. But you have forgotten about the one that the temple was erected for. Look at them and say, ouch. They... They would run Sister Terry into the temple and, and worship and do their ritual practices thinking that they had security in the fact that they can go to the temple of the Lord. But Anthony, they forgot about the Lord that the temple was erected for. And he said, you think you're good. You think you're safe. You think you got provision. You think you're okay. But you're not because I'm going to deal with you. And it goes on to tell them how they're going to go into a moment and some years of bondage at the hands of uh, the, um, uh, who was it, uh, Babylon. It was going to come in and take y'all into custody. And that's when you get the stories of da uh, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys and dealing with Nebuchadnezzar. It was at the attitude and the mindset of the people of God. God said, I'm married to Israel. He called Israel his bride. But he said, you have gone a whoring after other guys. You have forgotten about me. Look at your name and say, neighbor, don't lose focus on what truly matters. So their focus, Dickens Sparks, became the temple. Not understanding that the temple was only a, 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 a symbol of the God that they served. It wasn't God. You know we do that in our lives today. We, we, we prop up Christianity, but we don't prop up the God that called us into the way. We don't prop up the one he sent that is in front of Christian. We don't prop up Christ, but we Christians. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Let me stop messing with y'all this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you boasting in? Amen. The title of this message, Michael, put it up real quick. In this we boast. Look at them say, in this we boast. Having the understanding, say, having the understanding and knowledge of him. If you know God and if you understand him, 
guess what? That understanding, and will keep you. Becky, that understanding will hold you up even in the hardest of trials. That knowledge will hold you. Amen? When, when we lose things and or lose loved ones, I was talking to a good friend. I was talking to Brother Fred, and he said something, and it just stuck out to me. He's like, man, I, I'm going to trust in the Lord. My mind is many places, but I know who I trust in. And he said, I'm going to get to myself. He said, I'm going back to work, and I'm going to find out because I know what the Lord is going to do. He, he, he know who to turn to. Look at him and say, do you know who to turn to? It will keep you. I'm just using him as because he's, he's a man of God. He's showing strength even in trial, even in the moment of testing, in, even in the moment of hurt. That knowledge is what we can boast in. Do you know what it means to boast? Let me get some definitions of boast this morning. Talk to me. What does it mean to boast? I see you back here with the blonde. What's, what's your name? Deja. What does it mean to boast, Deja? <laughs> she looking at me. Don't put me on the spot. So, come on, diggers. What does it mean to boast? Talk to me. To be, okay, that's a, to be arrogant. To brag. Oh, who said that? Is that Miss Veronica, sister of Mother Veronica over there? <laughs> to brag. Who else got something to add to? I want to see Anthony. Anthony, you should be jumping on this. You know this stuff. What, what does it mean to boast, Anthony? Talk a lot. Uh-huh. Sister Terry, what does it mean to boast? She took it. She said brag. To brag. Let's look at this word boast. Amen. Boast means, amen, to, and I want to read it just like the dictionary had it up in here. Let me get down here real quick. I want to. To boast means to brag to gloat, uh, and it goes like this, to talk with excessive pride and self-satisfaction uh, about one's achievements, possessions, or ability. To talk with excessive pride, Dick and Stokes said, arrogance. Boasting, it can have an element of arrogance if you boast it in yourself, you get on someone who, who has a lot of material, they, they, they got a lot of uh, things in their life and they boast about their material, their car, their house, uh, uh, they got two, three trucks, they got this, they got this, and they got that, and they boast and they, they walk around with this posture of security, Anthony, because boasting also was rooted in confidence. Something that you have extreme confidence in, you tend to boast about it. So if you look good, you tend to have confidence in your looks. And you flaunt and you boast your looks. If you have money, you tend to have confidence in the, the security of having money and you boast in that reality. Amen? Look at them and say, what are you boasting in? So Israel at this time sparks was boasting in their security of finances, their land, uh, uh, their provision, their cattle, all this stuff that they had. And somewhere in the equation, God became a side note or almost a none note. To the point, now they're following other guys. They was really following themselves. Look at them and say, you following yourself. And they got so off that they got so wicked in heart that they began to sacrifice their own children to these false gods. So that means somewhere in their minds, Sister Veronica, they lost the knowledge of the true God. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, when you lose focus, it can take you many places that you really don't want to go. Amen. Put your hands together in this house. I'm going somewhere with this this morning because I want to let you know we do have something to boast about. Mike, I have something to boast about. It ain't, it ain't my bank account. I can't boast about that at all. Don't, don't y'all laugh at me. 
Many of y'all can't boast about y'all bank accounts either. Amen. Amen. I can't boast about uh, uh, the family I come from. It feels good to be a more. It feels good to be aware. But I can't boast about it. Amen. I look at some of my family, I'd be like, hey, I can't boast about y'all. <laughs> Amen. I, I love what the Lord has given me, <clears throat> Brother Anthony, but I can't boast about it. Because sometimes it ain't enough. Sometimes I'm looking at that bill and I'm like, how am I going to pay it? You ever been there? I can't boast about the job because I don't even like going there sometimes. Get there and get mad and want to go back to my car, start back up and go back home and get back in the bed, pull the cover on my head and cry, Lord, why me? You ever felt like that? Tired of this job. Tired of seeing y'all. Tired of my boss. Tired of these customers. Tired of tired. Look at them and say, I'm tired of tired. I know how I feel, boy. Get up in there. Don't you talk to me today, Dickie Stokes. Don't say nothing to me. Just come down here. Don't say nothing. I'm tired of tired. Amen. He said, cut it. <laughs> Life Let you know you cannot put any confidence in any of these things. You can't put confidence in our government. See, our government claims to be a nation that, that reveres the Lord, right? A nation of Christians. Look at your name and say, a nation of Christians. Founded on the truths of God. We act, matter of fact, we put in God we trust on our dollar bills. But look how we treat the foreigner. Look how we treat the poor. See, if you ain't rich and one of the part of the 1%, you don't matter. Make you slave at your work 10 hours, 12 hours a day, and, and, and the boss take home 90%, and you get half of the 10%, uh, a piece of the 10%. They making billions of dollars. Jeff Bezos, I said your name. Yes, I did. Bill Gates, who else you want to name? Worth billions, but what are the employees getting paid? Not even a fraction of that money. We're where the one percent owns almost eighty to ninety percent of the wealth in America. One percent controls it. When we can all be living in abundance, we can all have comfort. We can all take our families on vacation. We can all buy the uh, uh, the things we need in life. But because of your look at this word greed, but we put in God we trust dignitary on our money look at them and say how hypocritical is that we put our confidence in red and blue and none of them care about you did you hear that did let me say that again we put our confidence in red and blue and none of them care about you I, I rap I rap Becky I know how to put stuff they don't care about you I, yeah Trump didn't care about you and Biden don't too much either did I say that? Yes, I did. Because at the end of the day, they only caring about the people that's lining their pockets. So if you ain't the Coca-Cola brothers, if you ain't Jeff Bezos, if you don't own property and land, you just Becky who lives down the street and got your little bit, they don't care about us. They don't care about Sister Veronica. They don't care about Brother Stokes. And then they don't care about you. They'll let your job work you to the bone and not pay you much or nothing. But let a bank go down. We'll pay for the bank to get all their funds back. Didn't we do that? The Bible said you cannot put trust in man. Go back to the verse scripture, Micah, real quick. The Lord said, let us not, uh, uh, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. We boast, we see these men and with these women who, who claim to be our leaders and our, our founders and the people we're supposed to trust in. But if I watch politics, I see a lot of unwise people. How y'all ever feel like I could do a better job than they do? Just be real. Talk to me today. Sparks, you know you feel like I could do a better job than this. Becky, you know you watch, I could do a better job than that. With my little edge of I could do better than that. Because they don't care about you. This was the state Israel was in. The leaders didn't care about the people. They didn't have a heart for the people. 
They didn't have a heart for the things of God, yet they had all this love for the temple. See, we like the, the imagination and the thought of being righteous, but we don't want to be righteous. We like the idea of being holy, but Anthony, we don't want to be holy. So we put God in God we trust and we pray after every uh, Congress meeting and, and God bless America. And listen to what they say at the end, and no one, uh, well, that's not the God I know, and no one else. Well, I think God wants everyone blessed. Look at them and say they don't care about you. So you can't boast in them. Am I, am I, do I need to get off of that? I ain't going to get off of it. I'm not going to stop talking. We put confidence in our guns. And Do you not know that America has almost more, they got more guns than humans? I think it's like six, seven to one. More guns. And we wonder why our Walmarts are not safe anymore. But instead of fighting to protect you from the, the actions of mentally challenged, mentally ill individuals because of money and greed, they take the focus off of gun laws and give you more guns. But us as simple nobodies to them can see through the logic and say that's not wise. Look at them saying it's not wise. But for some reason, that's what they pass. Look at them and say, because they don't care about you. So why boast in them? Why boast in these things? Why let these things become what we focus on? Yeah, we participate and we give our thought and we give our vote, but we don't put confidence in these things. Look at them and say, don't put confidence in this. Uh huh. I, I love our military, but... At the end of the day, there's other militaries too. And at any given day, you heard that saying, at any given day, look at Russia and Ukraine. They thought they was going to go in and take that land over. They had been fighting for a whole year and looking depressed. You see Vladimir? <laughs> you see how depressed he look? Look at them and say, don't put no confidence in these things. But put confidence in knowing your God. boast in the wise, let us not boast uh, in, in our might, let us not boast in our riches, go to 24 but let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands, what does it mean to understand <clears throat> when you know someone, you understand them, you understand their ways you understand their, their uh, desires you want to please 
when you understand the Lord, that means you want to please him. You want to do what he commands. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That I am the Lord who practices steadfast love. He says, by this you will know that you are my disciple. By the love that you share one towards another. Digger Terry was talking about that love this morning. How can you see the poor in need and have substance and have no heart for those in need? Justice. When you see the ills that's happening to people, the, the, the unrighteous wrongs that are happening, when they jacking up gas prices, eggs costing six and seven dollars, and you put the burden on the less fortunate in order <clears throat> not to take a loss. Where is the justice? Where is the righteousness in the earth? You ain't going to find it in the earth, but you'll find it in the law. Because where the people of this land will let you down, the God of all things will keep you. Amen. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. He was trying to remind his people, I am a God of justice. I am a God of righteousness. I am a God of love. I care for the poor. I care for the foreigner. I care for the sojourner. I care for you. And if you reflect me, you should have the same love for neighbor as you have for Christ. So don't make the cross and not display what the cross represents. Look at your name and say, what you boasted in? Go here real quick, Micah. <clears throat> Go over to, uh, I think it's Proverbs real quick, and we're going to wrap this thing up. I'm almost done. Look at this. Proverbs 9 and 10 says, the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Or another word for that is knowledge. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning is where it starts. So if I fear the Lord, what does it mean to fear the Lord? It means I reverence him. I honor him. Sparks, I want to please him. I want to obey him. It ain't just being scared. Amen. I fear Sparks. If I'm Mike, I fear my father. I'm not scared of him, but I fear him. I respect him, so I want to honor what he has taught me. I want to honor what he called me to do. I want to honor uh, what he tasked me to do. I want to be obedient to him. I want to follow his instructions. I want to follow Sister Torture's instructions as Micah. I want to fear them. And then on the flip side, if you were my daddy's son, you feared him on the other side too. That was a big man. Look, Lord knows when he said take the trash out. Mike, you lucky, man. You lucky, Mike. You lucky you don't have to deal with staff from most senior. He said take the trash out. Guess what, man? The trash got taken out. And what else, son? <laughs> but the fear of the Lord, amen, is the beginning of wisdom. When you lose that reverence for the Lord, wisdom started to dwindle. Knowledge Right standing starts to fade. Understanding starts to dim. And you begin to come like Eli. Can't hear him no more. The sons running roughshod over the people. And no correction is being brought. No justice is being brought. To the point Eli, God said, I have turned my back on Eli. And he brought in Samuel, and at a young, tender age, he began to talk to Samuel. And Samuel ran to Eli, and Eli said, I ain't call you, Samuel. And Samuel go back to sleep, and he hear the Lord calling to Samuel. And he run to Eli, because he thought it was Eli. And Eli said, I haven't called you, Samuel, go back to sleep. And then Eli, in his dimness, began to perceive the Lord is talking to him. And out of the mouth of Eli, Samuel, I mean, out of the mouth of Samuel, Eli met his destruction. Look at him and say, who you boasting in? Amen. Put your hands together in this house. <clears throat> I want to go somewhere, but I may pick up on that next week. I want to talk about, real quick, Moses boasted in the Lord 
when he stood before Pharaoh. Stokes, he didn't boast in himself. He didn't boast in his own confidence. Mike, he boasted in the Lord that sent him before the Pharaoh. David boasted in the Lord before Goliath. When Israel's dignitary was hiding, the army of Israel was hiding, Anthony, scared to tend with Goliath, David boasted in his Lord. When they tried to put the armor on David and tried to give David a sword, David said, look, I haven't proved none of these man contraptions. I can go out there with my Lord and my Lord alone. Look at your name and say, who are you boasting in? Elijah, when he faced off against the 400 prophets of Baal, of Jezebel and, and, and caused them and began to test him. He, he boasted in the Lord. See, my confidence and our confidence needs to be in the Lord. 2023, we, we put in our focus on the Lord. We put in our confidence, our trust in the Lord because that is where we have strength. That is where our minds and our hearts are kept. Look at them and say, who are you boasting in? Look at him and say, I boast. Say it with me. I boast in the Lord. Put your hands together in this house. Amen. Give me some soft music, Mike. I was going to take you over here to 1 Corinthians, but I, I feel like we have reached our goal. See, they have put their focus real quick on the temple. And faithful, they thought because they had the temple in Jerusalem that they was always safe. But the Lord said, you are my temple. See, Dick and Terry, God wanted them to put his word on their hearts. That's why he said, I will no longer write it on tablets of stone. But I will take my word, Becky, and I will write it on their hearts. Because we are the temple that God wants to dwell in. This, this building is beautiful. But this building only has the spirit of God in it when we come in. This building can't praise him. The pews can't lift him up. Amen. The speakers can't do nothing but hiss if I don't talk it through. If you don't sing through, the, the instruments can play no sound if Mike never plucked the keys. The drums can never tune up a praise if I don't put sticks to, to the toms and to the snare and to the cymbals. Look at your neighbor and say, we bring the presence. Because he dwells in us. So if we are his temple, then we have to have the mind of him. Amen. So I encourage you on this morning. Dignitary, boast in knowing him. Boast in having a relationship with him. Boast in knowing that he's in your corner and that he's on your side. And Becky, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Even through you, Becky, he'll touch your family. He'll touch your mother. Whoever that is going through, he'll touch them through you. And I encourage all of you this morning to put your confidence back on the man with the plan. Amen. Put your hands together in this house. Amen. So I pray that that blessed you on this morning. What are you boasting in? In this we boast. In our Lord, knowing and understanding him is what we can put our confidence in. Because, like I said, those things we boast in, we tend to have confidence in. Let's not put confidence in our own wisdom and understanding. Let's not put confidence in our own strength and ability. Let's not put confidence in the riches and, and things that we can acquire in this life. Because all that stuff can fade away. All that stuff can, can dry up, so to speak. And then you're left with nothing but... If you know where to really put your trust in, you always have everything you need because you have the one who has everything in his hand. Amen. We put our confidence in the Lord. So since we put our confidence in the Lord, we boast in the Lord. Amen. Let's not forget that as we pray. Lord, we just thank you on this morning for this lesson to remind us to not put our confidence in all these fading things. These things that cannot hold us up. These things that we cannot depend on. But if we're going to boast and brag and be confident in anything, God. We need to be confident in knowing you and being a part of your family. God, you have accepted us in, you have adopted us as sons and daughters, and you have made us one as a body, as your son is the head. We are his body, many parts, but one body. God, let us 
a, a boast in that. Help us to understand that, that we can walk in confidence, that we can communicate in confidence and commune in, in, in this community with confidence, supporting one another through the love that you have displayed to us and, and an example before us, God. Let us be confident and boast in that. And God, let us walk in that understanding through the power of your Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, we ask this in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pray that that blessed you this morning. I pray that you got something out of it. Let's put our confidence and let's begin to boast only about having that relationship, having that understanding and knowledge of Him. Because fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Amen. I pray that you was blessed on this morning. This is the Living Branch. I am Pastor Staff D. And we will see you next week at the same time, same place right here on the Living Branch. Till next time, be blessed.